So we're going to take a look at the AQA uh, June 2016 paper two. So uh, the first question is all about determining Young modulus of a wire. Uh, we've got two vertical wires from a fixed support and we're using a vernier scale to measure extension and the divisions are all in millimeters. Okay, so let's have a look at the diagram. So the system looks like this. Uh, so it started with the vernier scale at zero, zero, and then once we've hung a mass on it, we can see the vernier scale has gone down and we've got a new reading on the vernier scale. Okay, so the reading on the vernier scale can be used to determine delta L. Use Do it using the diagram. So the first thing I'm looking for is where the zero on the vernier scale is. So it's just gone past the second division, which means two millimeters. The next thing I'm looking for is the division on the vernier scale, which best matches up with the main scale, which is the seventh division there. So the reading on the vernier scale is uh, going to be 2.7 millimeters, and that's how we figure it out. Okay, so moving on to question two, uh, we've got a graph showing how delta L varies with M. We're going to use it to determine the mass for the delta L we just found out. So essentially what we need to do, the delta L was 2.7. So we just read across, read down, and we can see it's 5.8 kilograms. Okay. So the student uses a digital vernier calipers to measure the diameter of Q. She places Q between the jaws and records the reading indicated without pressing the zero button. She moves Q and closes the drawers. So We've got a diagram showing this particular setup. So the measurement is uh, 0.44 with the object between the jaws, and it's minus 0.07 with the object with the jaws completely closed. So what that means is the diameter of Q is going to be calculated by adding together 0.44 and 0.07 to give you 0.51 millimeters. The original length of Q is 1.82, determine the Young modulus. Um, so first of all, Young modulus is stress over strain. Stress is force over area, strain is change in length over the original length. The area is pi d squared over 4, the force is mg. Substitute in the numbers and we get 1.9 times 10 to the 11 pascals. Okay, so the student repeats her experiment using a wire of the same original length and metal, but with a smaller diameter. Discuss two ways this might change the percentage uncertainty in the Young modulus. So the first, more obvious way is the smaller diameter means the percentage uncertainty in the diameter is larger, making the percentage uncertainty in the Young modulus larger. Whereas the slightly more difficult thing to spot is if we're using the same force with a smaller area that will have a larger strain and therefore you can have a larger extension. So extension has a smaller percentage uncertainty making the percentage uncertainty in the Young modulus smaller. Okay so moving on to question two we've got lengths of copper and iron wire joined to form junctions J1 and J2 that you can see on the diagram and when they're at different temperatures, an EMF is generated between them. The EMF is measured using a microvoltmeter, presumably because it's very small. And J1 is kept at zero degrees, while JT is heated using a sand bath, and the temperature measured using a digital thermometer. And this is the data that is collected, so the different temperatures and the different EMFs. So uh, what we're going to do, is, uh, presumably, is plot a graph of this. Um, so Absolutely. So the first thing we do is put a graph and drawing a line of best fit. So let's do both of those. So these are the two points that we're missing. There's our line of best fit. We want a nice smooth curve that goes through the points and determine the maximum value of the EMF. Well, we just need to go across from the maximum and the value was 1460 microvolts. Okay, so the gradient of the graph in figure five is measured for each of the values of temperature and a graph of the gradient against temperature is plotted. Okay, so 
the neutral temperature is the temperature corresponding to the maximum EMF. And you could find it using either figure five or figure six. Explain why it's more accurate to get the value from figure six. So if you look back at the diagram that I drew on figure five, the maximum could be a range of possible values. So it's quite a flat peak. So there's a lot of values that could have been the maximum theta. Whereas on figure six, there is only one point where essentially when the gradient is zero. Um, so that's why it's much more accurate because you can pinpoint precisely where that temperature is. OK, so it can be shown that G is given by this equation. So beta times temperature plus alpha, uh, alpha and beta are constants, determine alpha. So the first thing I'm going to do is determine the gradient of the graph because uh, we know it's of the form y equals mx plus c. So I've picked two values and that gives me the gradient of the graph. And then using one of those points, um, I can figure out what alpha is. So I used the point uh, 241.5, but you could have picked any point you like, giving a value of alpha as 10 microvolts per degree Celsius. Okay, so a student decides to carry out a similar experiment. The student thinks the meter in figure seven could be used as a microvolt meter to measure EMF. When the meter indicates a maximum reading and the needle points to the right hand end of the scale, the current is 100 microamps and the resistance is 1000 ohms. Calculate the full scale deflection of this meter when used as a microvolt meter. Well, uh, potential difference is current times resistance. Uh, so we can get that it's uh, 0.1 volts or 10 to the 5 microvolts. So the scale has 50 divisions between zero and full scale deflection. Discuss why this meter might not be suitable for carrying out the experiment. Uh, so the way I thought about this is the difference between the largest EMF reading and the smallest is 200 microvolts. Um, each division or is going to be 2000 microvolts because it's 10 to the 5 divided by 50 divisions. So the resolution is going to be way too small on the, to be able to separate out the different readings. They're all going to be between two divisions. Um, so another way we could describe that is the sensitivity of our instrument is far too low. Okay, so that finishes section A.